Hi, this is June with Make and Do with June. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to be working on this fabulous fall tote bag from Jane F. Hankins. It's called Night Owls and it is so much fun and easy too. I think this whole thing took me about maybe an hour. I'm using these markers that I got off of Amazon. They're fabric markers and I have a couple different brands here. One was called Super Markers. The other was just a generic fabric marker. I also have a white Posca fine line pen that I'm using. And I'm starting off with this green, coloring in just part of the leaf. And I want you to notice that I don't color it in solid right away. Um, I also test my markers on a scrap of paper that I have off to my left just to make sure that it's actually the color that I really want. Then I go over this with two shades of green for these leaves. I'm showing you how to do several different kinds of leaves. So the first ones are green leaves. Then after I put my two shades of green on, I go over with a yellow, which just beautifully blends them all together. If you want to pause the video and take a close up look at how they appear after I've gone over them with the yellow, please do so. Otherwise, continue to watch. Next, I'm going to show you how I color the wood, the tree branches. So I'm testing out my browns. And I like to have a variety of browns, kind of a light uh, dark brown and a reddish brown. And then, of course, a yellow, because that's what I use to blend all my colors together. So I quickly go over the branches. And again, I don't fill them in completely. Just over the edges. In this case, I'm going over a lot of the lines that Jane has in her drawing. And again, just quickly. Then I take my yellow, and I just want to say that um, I use my yellows to blend a lot. I use a lot of the lighter colors, and I'll be doing a video on using these markers to blend colors. Uh, you can use these markers. I also love Arteza markers. Um, they are very easy to work with. But I started with these today because I had the variety of colors that I wanted and they're easy to use. So I've gone over this with the yellow and now I just fill in a few of the little stars. The yellow does not get ruined by going over the browns or the greens or any other color that you're shading, using it to shade with. If you want to make sure, just kind of work it off on a piece of paper. When I say work it off, I mean draw with the marker and make sure that there is no more of that color showing up. Now I'm outlining the eyes with an orange. I don't want the whole eye to be solid orange. So I just do the outside and same thing with the beak and I'm just quickly going over it, not filling it in completely solid. Then I'll take my yellow marker and now I fill in the rest of the eye and it just blends beautifully and it gives kind of a depth to the eyes. Owl's eyes in reality are pretty yellow most of the time. I guess it depends on the owl. But in these, this case, these owls are going to have the orange and yellow eyes, and then it just blends together the beak. And I just wiped off the end of the marker just to make sure that some of the color didn't come through. So now I'm going to show you how to do some more fallish leaves. They are transitioning from the green with a little bit of brown on the edges to more of the orange and yellow. So I just do little lines here and there. I'm using the orange and when you mix orange over green it will turn brown. I 
and that leaf ended up getting really kind of muddy. It also depends on the order that you use your marker. So I always put the darker color on first and then over go over it with the lighter shade and blend those colors in together. So these I did the orange and yellow leaves, but I wanted a little bit more green in them. And as we go down the tree, you'll see that they change colors. So now I'm going on to the owl itself and I'm using a medium brown and notice that I'm just drawing around the edges, kind of over the lines that are already there and not filling in completely, just quickly brushing over it around the edges. And then I will take my yellow and this is where the magic happens. You start blending it together and it pulls out that brown into a little bit of the yellow. And you'll notice it like at the peak on his forehead. Notice how I bring in some of that yellow, um, bring in the brown using the yellow so that it makes almost a little V there on his forehead. And then I fill in the feathers. And since he's got a nice round tummy, I'm gonna bring in the lines slightly curved, but not all the way to the center to give that dimensional look. I actually used the tan of the tote bag as his belly. So he looks like a nice round, little round owl. Then I put in some more flecks of the brown. Go over that with the yellow and you, you'll notice that it uh, ties some of that in, blends in. So it just gives a little more dimension to his body. And then lightly sketch in just little wisps of yellow to make his tummy look a little more round. Then I'm adding just little touches of orangish brown in here and there. Just because owls are not all yellow and brown, they do have a little bit of color to their feathers. Coloring his toes, I start off with the orange, then dab in a little yellow, and then I finish off with just a little bit of brown and that gives them some depth and shape. Now I'm going to go on to do some of the orange and yellow leaves. So I colored half the leaf orange, and again, just sketched over it, didn't fill it in completely. And now I go over the entire leaf with this yellow. Now I'm going on to the next owl, same thing, going over it with the browns. After I have to get all my pens out of the way, I have a tendency to stack up all my pens <laughs> right under my hand, but sometimes that's the way it is. I'm just following the lines, the shading lines that Jane included on her picture. Just going over them lightly with the dark brown. Back to my trusty yellow. And again, it'll pick up some of that color and blend it right in. See how nice that little peak on his forehead looks once you go over it with the yellow? And it just softens all that dark brown hard edges. fills in all the extra spaces. And again, using my lines to make it look round around his belly. 
I just love these nice little round owls. They're just so cute. A curved line always makes it look a little more 3D. And in doing that, it makes his tummy look rounder. If I were to draw straight lines, it just wouldn't look the same. Just adding a few highlights here and there. Time for him to get his toes done. And then on to some more leaves. Now, moving on to the last little owl, but before I finish him, I want to do some of the branches on the top of the bag. Fill those guys in. Again, just sketching lightly, following the lines, but not filling in completely. I just love the warm colors in this picture. But you could do the owls any color you wanted. I've actually seen these owls done in pastel colors. I've seen them done in um, bright colors. It's whatever your heart desires. So now I'm just touching up around the outside edges. What I'm using here is actually a dark blue gray. And that's more adding like shadows than anything, but just little sketches here and there. And I also filled in the center of his eyes just to darken them up a bit. And then I'm going to do a little bit of shadows around his feet so that they stand out more. And I go around the outside of the owl and uh, just to separate it from the background and the tree. The one owl that is up against the tree kind of needs a little separation from the tree. So I go around him just to add that line of division. Outline a few of his feathers. And then again, the shading around his toes. Now I'm going to use my white Posca marker and just put a little bit of shine in each of their eyes. Thank you for watching me color these little owls. They were a lot of fun. Please hit subscribe and like so that you get the rest of my videos as I post them. Have a great day.